It was 2017, just a few weeks after Hurricane Maria. Three million people in Puerto Rico were hit by a Category 5 storm. We would learn months later that nearly 5,000 lives were lost, that nearly 200,000 Puerto Ricanos were displaced because their homes were destroyed, and that FEMA would relocate hundreds of thousands of Puerto Ricanos who never did return back to Puerto Rico. But in that immediacy of that moment, I personally was not aware of what was the state of my family. How were they doing? How were they surviving? How were they faring? And I arrived at the New York Comic Con late because my mind was just not there, was not focused, and I was set to do my four-day event, and I'm pushing through an incredibly um, dense crowd to get to my table. Now, Artist Alley is, is the part of the Comic Con which typically doesn't draw as much traffic as the main floor, where it's celebrities or the new products that are being introduced from video games to toys. Even though Artist Alley consists of the creatives that created this industry, but for some reason there were just hundreds if not thousands of people between me and my table. And I finally make my way to the table and there's a volunteer for the event waiting there and I express my kind of confusion, like why are there so many people here? Like, this is crazy, the amount of traffic. And he looks at me incredulously and he says, they're here for you, Edgardo, they've been waiting for you. And I look back, some people had Puerto Rican flags, some people were recognizing me, pointing. I set up my table very quickly. That event turned into an incredible opportunity to share stories and to share hugs and to share tears because many Puerto Ricanos saw my table as a, a place of familiarity, as a place of, of answers even. And one of those who were actually waiting to speak to me was Dan DiDio, who at the time was co-publisher of DC Comics. And Dan DiDio is, is married to a Puerto Rican, and there he is. When you're in the industry, you know who people are. You don't know them personally, but you know them by face. And I look into the um, crowd, and I recognize him. And not only did I recognize his face, but he's wearing like a, a world uh, major, uh, a, a, the World Baseball League um, hat of the Puerto Rican team. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I'm like singling him to come forward. And he's like, no, no, I'm good. He waited an hour before he got to the table. And at that point in 2016, I had only published one book, which was La Burinquena number one. And he's flipping through my book, as a typical publisher editor would do, and it's kind of like getting into the production value, getting into the, the layout, and occasionally looks up at me and looks at the book and finally starts asking me, you, you did this? You did this book? And I was like, yeah, I produced the entire thing. Now, anybody else in, in, in any industry, when they had that opportunity where a studio head or, or any major executive, you think, this is my chance. I can pitch the best Batman story that they've never heard. I can pitch the best Wonder Woman series that's never been published. But at that moment, all I was worried about was my family. All I was worried about was all of these stories that all of these other Puerto Ricanos were sharing with me during this event. And what immediately came to mind and came out of my mouth was, what are we going to do for Puerto Rico? And he was taken aback by this kind of like audacious statement that I just made. But that would lead to an incredible collaboration that within days of that event brought me in a legal uh, contract with DC that gave me complete access to their entire catalog of characters, that gave us complete access to artists and writers who were exclusive to DC, but if they were available and interested, were allowed to work with us exclusively on this project. The book would become a number one bestseller on Amazon for four months straight. It allowed us to raise a significant amount of money because we wanted to make an impact immediately. My partner, Kyung Jan Miranda, would establish what we now refer to as the La Borinquena Grant Awards. And she had the vision back then to not take this money and just donate it to a larger corporate nonprofit. Oftentimes, when there's a crisis, a cataclysmic event, the human spirit, the human identity, the human nature is just to immediately fundraise and donate. But that is not sustainable. And oftentimes, these larger nonprofits kind of like acquire all of the funds and all of this attention. But there have been some stories that have been um, revealed in terms of like, where does the money actually go? 
So Kyung had this idea, why don't we vet and do the work and find grassroots organizations in Puerto Rico? And once we find them, why don't we give the money directly to them? And why don't we use this money that we've raised as a, as a, as a pot and draw from it and give grants? Now, many people, when they talk about Puerto Ricanos, they always speak about our resilience, particularly after all of these natural disasters or economic disasters the humanitarian issues. But the one thing I love to speak about being Puerto Rican that often isn't spoken enough is how resourceful and how creative and how, how we're able to like stretch that one little dollar so far, right? And these nonprofits we gave $10,000, $5,000 grants to were able to do incredible work. One such group was Departamento de la Comida. They created a seed exchange program, a tool sharing program. They even created, I don't know how they were able to do this, they even created their own micro grant program based on the money that, that we gave them. The success of this book allowed us to raise close to $200,000 and that would also pave the way to future collaborations like a more recent one with the Natural Resources Defense Council, NRDC. And this NRDC collaboration brought our longtime friend and ally, Rosario Dawson, physically into the books with us. And she literally appears in the books alongside La Borinquena, but as the activist that she is, as this voice for social justice, as this voice um, and celebrity who uses her platform to address climate change. And so this collaboration for DC Comics was unprecedented. And uh, I received Eisner's Humanitarian Award for that. And I recall while I was on stage, um, taking that platform, literally that stage, to call out the hundreds and maybe close to a thousand people that were in attendance and, and remind them that this narrative that permeates the superhero genre is centered around social justice. And there's nothing wrong about being referred to as a social justice warrior because the superheroes themselves are fighting injustices. There is a, unfortunately a disconnect when that stays in the pages and the panels of these comic books and it only goes to support multi-billion dollar corporations and doesn't actually take into consideration the real effects of charity and philanthropy as, as something that should be part of the program, part of the publication. So since um, Hurricane Maria, which happened a year after, um, actually just nine months after our first book was published, we've always been dedicated to philanthropy and we've always been dedicated to finding opportunities and collaborations DC Comics, NRDC, we teamed up with Puerto Rico's um, Chocolate Cortez. These collaborations allow us to bring awareness, but also bring in brands that have already shown a level of commitment and a level of interest. And it's also showing that philanthropy is something that can be also attached to activism as well. I've been fortunate to be embraced by many Puerto Ricanos in Puerto Rico because there already exists a thriving comic book scene. But similar to this phrase that's often thrown around that you know nothing can kind of exist outside of this island, and given the fact that Puerto Rico are a series of islands, that is the reality. This industry doesn't actually export itself into the rest of the United States and into the rest of the world. Given that the character that I've created is literally named after Borinquen, literally named after the national anthem Puerto Rico, I personally feel a responsibility to connect to Puerto Rico beyond the philanthropic work, but in the artistic community. I've brought in artists to work on our projects to give the book what I feel is the authenticity that it, that it merits. Um, it's like when um, Bad Bunny says that in, we need, uh, many people are, are, want to be like us, but they lack the sazón. Well, I make sure that we have sazón in all of our pages with the level of talent that we engage with to make sure that the voices are authentic. I'm 52, so I don't sound like a 19-year-old Puerto Rican in, in, in Puerto Rico. Even though Marisol is from Brooklyn, the Puerto Ricans that she's inter interacting with are from Puerto Rico. And although many Puerto Ricanos speak fluent English, they still have their own very particular specific slang. That's why you have BuzzFeed articles that are constantly coming out that are trying to provide Puerto Rican glossaries for, for listeners of reggaeton. Well, 
Keeping a, a, a roster of Puerto Rican artists allows us to make sure that this project isn't just a fabrication of my imagination, but more of a publication that's connected to a generation that is actually really involved and really aware of colonial life. And as artists who are literally living in, in a colony, oftentimes they educate me, they share with me. So not only do I um, share the pages with them, but I oftentimes even share stages with them when we do talks. We recently had an event at the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design, and uh, Puerto Riqueño is a professor there, Mike Hawthorne, and he's currently illustrating Batman for DC. But Eliana Falcón, who's a colorist and editor for us, lives in Rio Piedras, Puerto Rico. So we brought her in virtually to be part of this panel, to, to participate. And that authentic authenticity, that voice is so important. Because what I want readers to understand about our publications is that they're not just a, a story that is inspired by the superhero genre. There are still threads that are connected to the, to the authentic life and to the authentic voices of Puerto Rico. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check out more i9 videos here on YouTube.